Elizabeth Norton's The Hidden Lives of Tudor Women, A Social History, provides an enlightening exploration of the lives of women during the Tudor period, spanning from 1485 to 1603 in England. In this detailed examination, Norton draws from a wealth of sources, including legal documents, letters, and personal accounts, to paint a vivid and comprehensive picture of the myriad roles and experiences of women during a dynamic and often tumultuous era in English history. The book sheds light on the various stages and aspects of women's lives from birth to death. It starts by discussing the birth of girls in Tudor society, where gender immediately influenced the prospect and expectations placed upon a newborn. Female infants were often met with disappointment, as male heirs were preferred for carrying on the family name and inheriting property. Still, the birth of a healthy child was always a cause for celebration due to the high infant mortality rates. Norton then progresses to discuss the upbringing and education of girls, which was significantly different from that of boys. While boys might be sent off to grammar schools or even universities, girls' education was primarily focused on domestic skills and, for the higher classes, some basic literacy and numeracy to prepare them for running a household. Only a few received a more profound education, usually those from noble families or girls destined for a life in a religious institution. Marriage was a central event in the lives of Tudor women. Norton articulates how marriages were often arranged with little input from the bride, designed to secure alliances and improve the family's social and economic status. Women were expected to be compliant and to serve their husbands faithfully, bear children, and manage the household. Norton does not shy away from discussing the more unpleasant aspects of marriage for women, such as lack of autonomy, the threat of domestic abuse, and the dangers presented by childbirth. In a time when religion played a crucial role, Tudor women were expected to be pious and virtuous. Norton explains the impact of the religious turmoil of the period, including the Reformation and England's break with the Catholic Church, on women's lives. Some women found new opportunities for religious expression, while others faced persecution for their beliefs. Monastic life, once a viable alternative for women seeking to avoid marriage or desiring a scholarly life, was largely swept away by Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. The role of women as mothers and the impact of childbearing on their lives is examined in depth, with Norton describing the pressure on women to produce heirs and the high maternal mortality rates that made childbirth a risky endeavor. Child-rearing was an important duty, as children were expected to contribute to the family's livelihood as soon as they were able. However, the emotional aspects of motherhood, often omitted from historical records, are given due attention, with Norton using available sources to highlight the joys and sorrows that accompanied motherhood during the Tudor era. The book also delves into the world of work for women, from those of the lower classes who engaged in labor out of necessity to the noble women who managed vast estates. Women could be found working in various trades, in service, or running their own businesses. They were integral to the economy, despite legal and societal restrictions that limited their independence and financial control. Widowhood is another critical aspect discussed. Norton portrays how widows occupied a unique social status in Tudor England, often gaining greater autonomy and financial control than married or single women. Some widows chose to remarry, but others relished their newfound independence, running their businesses or administering their late husband's estates. However, widowhood could also mean vulnerability and struggle, especially for those without financial resources. Norton does not neglect the lives of women on the margins of society. She considers the lives of prostitutes, beggars, and women who were accused of crimes, especially witchcraft. The book also touches upon the limited legal rights of women, painting a clear picture of the vulnerability and dependence that characterized their existence within the legal system of the time. The Hidden Lives of Tudor Women portrays the myriad ways in which power was wielded in the lives of women. From the overt power of queens and noblewomen to the more subtle forms of agency practiced by ordinary women in their daily lives and relationships, Norton examines the delicate interplay between gender, class, and power. 
She highlights the exceptional women who defied norms, managed to exert influence, or made significant contributions to Tudor society despite the constraints imposed upon their sex. Finally, the book offers a perspective on the accomplishments and downfalls of women of this period. Despite the obstacles they faced due to their gender, some Tudor women were able to navigate the complexities of their world with skill and resilience. Norton's history spotlights the ways in which these women, whether famous or ordinary, shaped and were shaped by the times in which they lived. Throughout the social history presented, Elizabeth Norton succeeds in illuminating the diversity of experiences of Tudor women. She provides readers with richly textured insights into their daily realities, emphasizing the contrast between the expectations placed upon women and their individual lived experiences. By doing so, Norton offers a, a nuanced understanding of the fabric of Tudor society and the integral role that women played in it, revealing a world that, while often dominated by men, was significantly influenced and upheld by the women who navigated it with strength, ingenuity, and grace. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.